Hey everyone. So if you've been around for a minute, you will know that what we usually do for our small group lessons is a rotating curriculum. This curriculum is pretty cool and it's important as it's designed to equip you to graduate from high school and confidently face the common faith challenges the world will throw at you as young Christian adults. That said, we are going to talk about something different tonight because um, it's more relevant to your group's particular situation. And don't worry, we will get back to that curriculum soon enough. So tonight we are going to talk about change. Change is unfortunately one of those things that is just part of life no matter what. There's a saying you might have heard, change is the only constant in life. Now this quote is interesting, of course, because it's ironic. It's taking two opposite ideas, ch uh, change and consistency, and then saying one is the other. So that's a little hard to wrap our brains around. But it's also interesting because it was originally said by a Greek philosopher, Heraclitus, however you say that, and he said it way back in the 5th century BC. So there are not many sayings out there that have so much truth and so much resonance that people keep quoting them for 2,500 years. So this dude really struck a chord. And of course, the most maddening part of that universal truth is that 2,500 years later, we are still just as bad at dealing with change. Since then, we as a, as a society have figured out how to make steel make cars, electricity, we have this thing called the internet. Um, we've got all this stuff, but yet we can't figure out how to adjust to change. We all collectively still suck at it. So if you are struggling with change, at least I can tell you, you are in good company with every human who's ever existed. So lots of shows and music touch on this because it's such a universal experience. I'm actually going to show you a clip from the Big Bang Theory. And if you've seen the show, you know that the character Sheldon, one of his defining personality traits is that he hates change and has a certain way that he likes everything to go. So in this clip, we're going to see that in full, of, in full effect. What kind of tea is appropriate for winning a Nobel Prize and now everything is changing and you feel unmoored from reality? <laughs> I don't know, Earl Grey? You know, this is something I've wanted my whole life, but I guess I never considered how everything would be different. Buddy, I, I know it all feels overwhelming right now, but I promise you, things will settle down. There's no Earl Grey, you filthy liar! <laughs> hey, is Penny here? No, why? I wanted to show her my latest creation. I give you... Dr. Amy Farrell Fowler. <laughs> Wow, Amy, you look amazing. Thank you. Sheldon, what do you think? I like you better the way you were. But she looks beautiful. Classic lines, colors that complement her skin tone, and hair that goes from office to on the town in minutes. <laughs> I don't care. Put it back. I like the way I look. Well, I don't. My fault. I was out of Earl Grey. <laughs> Sheldon, that was really rude. Oh, I'm sorry. Amy is the one constant I can count on, and now she's changing. It's just a haircut and some clothes. No, it's the last straw. I can't take any more. <laughs> Can you believe it? They finally fixed the elevator. <laughs> this is a nightmare. What's with him? He won a Nobel Prize and his wife looks amazing. Oh, yeah, got it. It's really fast. 
I, I need to be alone right now. Don't try to follow me. All right. You need a ride? That'd be great. Thank you. <laughs> Poor Sheldon. Now, none of us are probably as bad as Sheldon. Um, his character, like most sitcom characters, shows a trait exaggerated to get a laugh. But we have all been faced with changes that make us want to run away as fast as we can. So we can all at least relate a little bit. And of course, God knows this about us. God is pretty much the one thing in life that doesn't change. So, phew, at least we've got that going for us. God is the same as he was in 500 BC, as he is now, and he will be the same in another 2,500 years. That fact in and of itself brings me so much comfort. When everything else is falling apart around me, I know God, the same God I've always known, the God who loves me unconditionally, is still constant. Jesus, being fully God, but also fully human, would have experienced this same intense discomfort with change as we do. Also, the Holy Spirit is within us and all around us, so I think she also knows intimately just how terrible this is for us. So, to help us out, God all throughout scripture provides us with verses full of comfort says to cast our burdens on him because he cares for us. He says that when we walk through a valley of dark shadows, to not fear. He promises to never leave us or forsake us. He promises to seek us out to leave the 99 to find us. God knows us, he hears us, and he loves us and thus provides for us. One of the ways he does this is he promises to us that he is going to work things out for our good. Romans chapter 8, verse 28, it says, We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's a big deal. God doesn't say, well, sorry, everything changed. I know it sucks. Good luck. Nah. He doesn't even say, don't worry. I know the change sucks, but I'm going to kind of make sure it evens out in the end, sort of. No. God says, I'm going to take this painful, uncomfortable thing and I'm going to work it out for your good. What an amazing promise from an amazing God. Just like everyone else who's ever existed, I've been through a lot of change in my life. When I am going through it, it really sucks. But then once I'm through it and I let some time pass, I really can look back and see where God had his hand and I can feel the results. It's important to note that this verse doesn't say that God caused the bad thing to happen to teach us a lesson. It just says that God takes the difficult circumstances and works them out for our good. But God always comes through and uses the change to teach me, to mold me, and to open my heart in ways that was closed off in the past, oftentimes ways that I didn't even know I was closed off. Because we are all works in progress, we are all called to grow and be more like Christ throughout our entire lives. When we stay put, when we don't grow, and we don't experience change, we get comfortable. And then we cease to actually grow. We avoid, we start seeking comfort everywhere we can, and then we just slowly get more miserable as the years go by. We need change to grow, evolve, and become the person that God has called us to be. So I know your small group is changing. For some of you, it's simply gonna look different from the one you were in as middle schoolers. For some of you, your life is gonna look different because a small group is now a part of it when it wasn't before. And for some of you, it's gonna look different from the high school group you experienced last year. So all of us are going through change. It will be different for everyone, harder for some than for others. But no matter what, we can trust that God will work it out for our good. God is going to use this change to help us become more like Christ. God is going to use our fellow group members and our leaders for support and encouragement all year long. God is going to break our hearts for the sake of the gospel, and we will find things we never thought we needed and then won't know how we ever lived without. God is ready and waiting to work this out for our good. I just can't wait to see how he does it. So that's the message for today. I hope you all have a great discussion, and I pray that we can all open our hearts to see how God moves among us tonight. Amen.